because I know there's a lot of things that we want to cover today. And um, the, but of course, the first thing, first things first, let me, let's see, let me pull this off is that we want to find out a little bit more about our girlfriend, Julie, because she's pretty amazing. And um, I want all of you to get to know her better. So why don't you yeah. first tell us a little bit about you? Okay. And um, your family. <laughs> <laughs> I am the oldest of nine children. Holy cow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, when I was in high school, just starting into ninth, into 10th grade, we moved to Mexico. Really? Because my dad was going to get a master's degree there. Oh. And he was working for, uh, for BYU also uh -huh. at the time and uh -huh. I was doing a project down there. Uh -huh. And I was there for uh, two and a half years mm. and then went to BYU. Mm -hmm. And graduated in home economics education. Well, there you go. <laughs> so that was fun. H have you always enjoyed sewing then? Um, I I started when I was in fifth grade. Okay. Uh, we had these little moon goons. I don't know if you've ever heard of those. Probably moon maybe people my goons. age do. Yeah, moon they were goons. about okay. Whoops, this way. Not sure. They were about that tall, not okay. very big, and they had super long hair. Uh, mine was pink hair. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And uh, I came home from school one day and said to my mother, um, "I want to sew some clothes for this." And of course, I'd never sewed a thing. And she uh -huh. had a new baby and was busy. And she said, I'll tell you what. And she got out the sewing machine, put it on the table, and handed me a stack of fabric and said, there you go. There you go. And so, you know, nothing looked like anything. But, <laughs> but I had fun with it. And uh -huh. then uh, didn't take a class again until junior high. And then uh -huh. I had a half a year of sewing. Then we moved to Mexico. Wow. And, uh, well time in between, but mm -hmm. I hadn't, didn't do any more sewing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I uh, made my first quilt down there, just figured it out. All it was was square sewed yeah. together. It wasn't yeah. anything wonderful. Yeah. But and then I got into really a lot of apparel sewing. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, made most of my own clothes, made my kids, even, you know, their jeans, their t-shirts, even their underwear, you know, <laughs> just because it was the fad because at the time could. to sew, yes. you know, to sew that. Yeah. So, but then later, now I don't do much apparel sewing anymore. You don't do I, underwear anymore? No. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. You In fact, I don't even make t-shirts. I don't do yeah, that. I do no. mostly quilting and embroidery. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, and you do it amazingly well. <laughs> amazingly well, for sure. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, someone, let's see. Sue said that they called them time dolls trolls. Oh, Time dolls. Yeah, trolls. they were like troll go. dolls, but we called like they were dolls. called moon goons then. We lived okay. in Albuquerque, New Mexico at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And all of them there called uh called them moon goons. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, it seems like a lot of you guys know exactly what she's talking about. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And Sue said that Homek, a girl after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that major. I really did. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. You know, our very own Ashley here at the shop, she just got her first, she just got hired her first teaching job. She's going to be doing facts. Well, they call it facts now, but yeah. like home ec um, at the high school um, nearby. Great. And she's That's pretty great. excited. So That's you'll have to great. talk to her afterwards <laughs> about it. Yeah. How fun. So um, you have, so you you were the, the oldest right. of nine children, but nine you children. also had a really big family, yes, didn't yes. you? Yes, I have. Tell us about your I family. I have eight children. Wow. And, uh, these, there's my kids, my uh -huh. husband and my, and all my kids. Oh my goodness. And that was just taken in June. We had a family reunion that oh. we were all at, 54 of us. Oh my goodness And that's gracious. just me and my kids and my grandkids. We have um, <laughs> that's a huge that's, family. That's the whole family there oh. um, with the, the in-laws and the kids and the grandkids. Oh, my goodness. And then this how little picture wonderful. here is of just the grandkids with us. So, <gasps> so how many there, grandkids? There are 37 Oh, my grandchildren. goodness. Wow. And they, they each have their own little personality. <laughs> it's lots of fun. <laughs> Some of them are showing oh, it there. Oh, <laughs> look how cute. So, what yeah. what are what's the age range? The oldest one uh, is is eighteen. He's oh in the white goodness. shirt in the back in the middle uh -huh. there. Uh huh. And um, he's actually going to be going to Brazil for uh -huh. two years for wow. with the church mission. And the youngest is um, 
the little one on my lap there that I'm holding. Aww. And she and that's nine months old. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's that's a huge family. <laughs> <laughs> It is. That's a lot of grants to it be uh, sewing for. It, well, do you, yeah. Do you I, sew for every one of them? You know, I don't. And mm -hmm. the reason is there's too many of them. Yeah, I, and I could never do it fair. I'm, right? pr I'm proud I, of you. <laughs> you, you. You have to kind you know, of know. What we do is at Christmas time, we we change, we trade names for a whole family to Perfect. trade with. Mm -hmm. And I'll sew something for them then uh -huh. when it's their year for Christmas. Yeah. Something special for them. Yeah. But I just can't. Keep 36? Up with 37, you know. 37? <laughs> yeah, oh. <so. laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah. My goodness. But I love what you said, Sable. She said so many cousins to support each and other. And they really do. They have mm. a great time together. That's wonderful. Fun. And um, everyone's just saying what an amazing family and beautiful family. Uh, Dolores wants to know, how do you remember their names? You know, people <laughs> ask that all the time, but it, it isn't hard for yeah, some reason. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. It's, yeah. you know, it isn't hard. Yeah. I might not get their birthday quite right. Yeah. <laughs> I always go. send them you a card for their birthday. birthday calendars or something, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do have one. <laughs> uh, Kathy wants to know, where do you hold a reunion to accommodate everyone? You know, the one we just question. had we we held at Bear Lake mm -hmm. and we rented a place from BRBO mm -hmm. and it had nine bedrooms so mm. it was great we we had a great wow time. wow yeah. that is really that that is so. something <laughs> that is something yeah. my goodness wow how fun so you're a busy grandma yeah right you're yeah. You, you, I mean 36 grandkids Whew. 37 37 yeah. <laughs> Um, 37 um that's every good grandma would definitely correct for sure <laughs> for sure you have to because every one of those are so important I, that's just amazing 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 um so uh and janet says how wonderful to have all your kids together for such a picture yes right? it is and and you know it's hard to get everybody every year because mm. kids have things that they're doing going to camp or mm -hmm. you know whatever and this year was great we had everybody there so yeah that was great. wow that's incredible oh love what you guys are sharing on here you'll have to go back and read later okay yeah for sure <laughs> so um today we are um it, it, thank you for for filling us in on a little bit more about you because um it's just so fun to be able to to meet and to uh, recognize people who are just like us, you know, everyday mm -hmm. people who love doing what we all love to do, right? right? And we all have so many things that we can learn from one another. And that's one of the great things about when we build a community is that we share these different things that we've learned. and. Right you are no exception because um you have taught me some things that i didn't know either so yeah <laughs> it's true and so i'm really excited because she's going to share with you some of her favorite uh projects that she's has worked on and then a couple of really great techniques um that she has also learned over the years and so i'm excited for you to do that so where do you want to get started where well, should we start? Um, do you want to talk about quilts? Do you want to? Why don't we show a few quilts okay. and then we'll get into some of the techniques. Okay. And then we'll go back to some quilts. We'll just see where the time goes. Sounds good. Let's okay. do it. Right. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to take a look at some of her quilts that she has done and they are gorgeous. Now, one of the things you love to do that I've noticed is you love to combine your embroidery with quilting. Am I right? Right. Right. Tell us and about this gorgeous this quilt. quilt. And if you go up even higher, they can see the that it says uh, the grandmother and the let's pull that over there. The mother, yes, there uh, we as go. well. It's kind of hard to see, but maybe she can show you one of these some of these billion roses up close. Oh my goodness, the billion roses are gorgeous. Oh, no, <laughs> you know where this. you're going yeah. than I do. <laughs> there, there we, we go. go. There we go. Look at that. This is all done on the embroidery machine and absolutely beautiful julie um Thank tell you. us and this tell one us also this. has a lot of piecing you know the half square triangles along mm -hmm. here and these these other blocks last week we uh, did all the stars and yes. there happened to be a lot of them on here absolutely there's that one and there's um where's the other one we we're looking there's at there's one of them oh yeah the friendship we, star is right there i love that yeah so 
anyway, this one was really fun to do. Mm -hmm. It was, it turned out beautifully and I was really, really happy. Oh, with it how really did. Goes. And you know this, what? This is exactly who you are, Julie. I love <laughs> that, it. This one's called a wonderful journey. Life mm, is a wonderful journey. So I love that. That's perfect. You know, and uh, those embroideries with the bullion roses are uh, done by Ace Points. Ace Points. Ace Points Embroidery. And okay. they are, if you go into Ace Points Embroidery, which is pointsof.com, that's their address. Okay. And it's number AP856. Oh, my goodness. We even have the number. <laughs> you, you are totally prepared. So, what? Okay. AP856. AP856. Write it down if you want the number AP856. And if you don't catch it, we'll fill you in on it later or you can email us and we'll get that information to you. Let's take a look at this quilt. Ooh, bright <laughs> and colorful. I love it. So vibrant. This one is um, a hearts quilt. It's uh, designed by Sarah Bedler and these are her, her hearts. This quilt was actually uh, came a few years ago in a kit. Um, the fabrics did came in a kit. Okay. And they are it's silk dupioni. Ooh. But you know, I don't know if I would use silk dupioni again. Really? What it's, what was the challenge with it that? It's so hard to work with. It's yes. hard to press. Yes. Um it's hard to it's just frays easily. Uh-huh. And I did put a uh, weft on the back of it. Weft okay. is kind of a cheese cloth cloth looking product that is an iron on. Uh-huh. And that helped with some of the some of the fraying, but wow, it was it was really difficult to. It is stunning, to work though. With, it really but. is is just gorgeous. Wow. What's next? Then there's this one. Okay. Let's see, this one goes like this. Oh, beautiful! Wow. These are also embroidered blocks. Yes, this is all embroidery on here. Wow. And um, this one is is called a Madeline quilt by Janet Sampson. Janet Sampson, okay. And um, this one has an interesting technique. It's got these little, these are, it's like a, a piping, but mm -hmm. it's flat. It's not mm -hmm. corded piping. Mm -hmm. so and that like was- like a tiny flange. A little tiny flange, mm -hmm. yeah. And that was really the hardest uh, thing about it, I thought. Really? Because it was really hard to put it, insert it into the seam and have the flange look even yes. when you were done. Yes. So that was difficult. And I did a lot of unpicking. But, but <laughs> look, at, look at how it just, that it creates a frame yeah. around each of these yeah. quilt blocks. It really makes that it pretty. beautiful. And look at this border. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, and that border is done on the endless hoop. Yes, love the endless so that, hoop. Okay. So that it uh, keep continuous, you know, goes yes. across all the way across. Wow. Okay, so here's a question for you because I'm noticing that your quilts are are absolutely beautiful and you've got some dense designs on some of these. Yes. What is your uh what is your trick okay. to getting um getting the machine flat. embroidery? Yeah, flat. flat. Don't you guys want to know what Julie's trick is to that because that's not easy to do no um what do you do okay there are several things i do okay first of all whenever i'm sewing i always press a lot <laughs> <laughs> you pre i prepare the fabric ahead of time using you can use best press but i like to use um a spray um sizing okay because you don't want starch because mm -hmm. it will flake Right. You know, mm -hmm. but I use a, a spray sizing. You can get that at Walmart for a dollar a can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so the fabric is it's stable to start stiffer. with. Mm -hmm. Then um, if you're doing something heavier, you always want to put um, the SF-101. Tell me the name of the Kimberbell product. That that uh, has. Fusible backing. The fusible mm -hmm. backing. Yep. You, I put that on them. D absolutely. You know, because yep. then Not it's going to stabilize mm -hmm. it. And the, the, the that's an interfacing. And the mm -hmm. interfacing really is to stabilize the fabric itself, mm -hmm. where the stabilizer 
is to stabilize the stitches. Exactly. Yeah. And so you really need You've both. You've said that very well. You yeah. do need both. Yeah. You need both. I, I, I look at the fusible backing as the preparation for the fabric. Right. It, it, it's preparing the fabric. It is. It is. But it, you're right. It is the right. stabilizer that's, you know, taking care of the stitch out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once you've sprayed it and you've put the backing on, mm -hmm. then if I'm doing something that's really stitch and heavy, mm -hmm. I always use a, an iron-on tearaway stabilizer. Okay. I don't think Kimberbell has an mm -hmm. iron-on tearaway. No, but you so, could use like a spray adhesive with a tearaway. You could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I use the iron-on mm -hmm. tearaway. Mm -hmm. um, and the one I use is actually from, by Floriani, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's a, called Heat and Stay. Uh-huh, sure. And uh, Heat and Stay Tearaway. And mm -hmm. I iron that on, mm -hmm. and then, like in this one behind me, which mm -hmm. I'll talk about in a minute, you you want to be able to hoop the whole block. And you don't want to float it because... Did you guys hear that? <laughs> Those of you in Stabilizer Lab, did you hear that? <laughs> like, it, you're going to have much better results if you hoop rather than float. Right. Okay. Right. And when you hoop the, the whole block, obviously you have to cut the block bigger. Right. So this so, one, for example, mm -hmm. behind me, they are 12 inch blocks finished, mm -hmm. but I cut them at 18. Wow. Because I was using my big hoop mm -hmm. and you want to, you don't want to have hoop burn in them. Right. And you want to have plenty of room and you're going to cut it out it centered later. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. also uh, always try to baste in the hoop. Yes. I always do that too. Using your machine to baste in the hoop. Yep. Right. Yep. And so if you do all of that, you're yeah. going to have a perfect block. Yeah. In fact, that's the first thing you asked me when you saw this quilt I did. the other day. Uh -huh. is you said, how did you get no puckers in no all puckers. of those? No puckers. No, no. You know? It's really, it's really incredible. Yeah. yeah. And that's how, you yeah. know, there are no puckers. Yeah. Because it, it's a little more work. It is more work. <laughs> <laughs> but the, oh, sorry. <laughs> but <There>. the results, <laughs> <laughs> the results are just, are impeccable. They are. Yeah. They're stunning results, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you have to take the time to prepare it all. Absolutely. And it does take time. Yeah. It's a big job. Yeah, but, it does. Wow. But it turns out really nice. It does. It does. So that's all how right. I do that. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Okay. So all what's right. next? So. Okay, we've got another quilt. Okay. Wow. This one is uh, another one by Sarah Vedler. It's called Simply Dreaming. And <laughs> this was supposedly a block of the month, but it was so much work that it was really a quilt of the month, I think. Wow. It was really a lot of work with all of these mm -hmm. appliques and all the embroidery and cutting it out on the on the on my scanning Definitely. cut. And then wow. the quilting uh, was done that. in the hoop and I did all of that in the hoop. Mm -hmm. And um, the quilting alone on this quilt took me a week of working every day, all day, eight to 10 hours. Wow. <laughs> it was a really big job. So you quilted this? I did. Wow. On my embroidery machine. On your embroidery machine. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. That's so amazing. She actually had this quilt was supposed to be bigger than this. Mm -hmm. But um, after five months, mm -hmm. I was done. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I have to have my life be for something else. That's right. <laughs> so I said, I'm done. And I that's put a border amazing. on it. I mean, a binding on it. And, and called it, it good. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's beautiful, Julie. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. Ooh, this is quilted quite a bit as well. Yeah. I love it. And some of these are folded because I've had them folded. So yeah. anyway, but um, this one was fun. A Christmas one. You had to use a lot of design positioning for this middle. Mm -hmm. And I want you to notice these um, these borders here. They're quarter inch borders. And I'm going to show you how to do yes. that so that they look absolutely perfect. Quarter inch borders. Oh, my goodness. This and is um, thing. maybe she can bring up. Can you bring up the picture of the one that how the pattern was for this one? Yeah. Let's take a look. Mm, this that one? red one, candy yeah. cane. Yeah. Okay. This is called Candy Cane Christmas. Now you can see the difference. Can you? Can they move that over just a little Unfortunately, bit? Unfortunately, no. no okay. But we can't do right. this. All right. What well, do you want us to look at? Um. Well, when you saw the all over the quilt, and we'll show it to you again in a minute. Mm -hmm. But you can see that what she did on the pattern is she made lots of pinwheels. Uh huh. Which I didn't like those. Okay. <laughs> And also this border, I, I didn't want to do her um, 
her candy cane border because that's all pieced in there. Candy cane. Okay. But I like these little trees. Cute. Going around. So what a great way to change things up a little bit. Yes, and then I changed a different with a uh, different technique with these borders here as well. Wow. With the, I mean, these last two borders, and the binding. Wow, that is something. So I love that. So it just gives it a whole different look. It really does. I love yeah. that, Julie. Yeah. So and then this one too also has a quarter inch border on it. We're going to talk about the quilt behind us in just a minute. Yeah. So wow, this is beautiful too. And I've got a picture. And look of before this. she does the picture. Look at the look at look at how I've added the quarter inch border that was not on there before. Okay. And uh, I've put gold. Um, metallic thread in the in the trees. Maybe you can, in the tree. Maybe wow, you can see that. I don't know if you can see the shining of it or not. That and then this so is a shiny cool. fabric that I. Made I was going to say, what did you use here? That <laughs> it's is just an interesting. It's a, yeah, it almost looks like a lame or something. It's. I'm going to show the actual pattern. The original. That is pattern. the pattern. The original. Okay. And I changed it yeah. quite a lot, and I. <laughs> I think it looks better. I do too. <laughs> so it's, I mean, it's just a stunner. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But notice how that quarter inch border just sets things off and it frames sure it does. so nicely. It sure does. And you know, when we talked about uh, quilt labels the other day, I'm noticing oh, yes. you are very good about your quilt labels. <laughs> and there's a cute one on here for this one. Feathered Christmas by Julie Haney. And then you have the... Is, is this the dates that you were working on it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So you worked so, on it for over a year. Well, not every day all day no, long. No, but no, yeah. no, no. But yeah. I think that's kind of neat that you yeah. actually put when you started it and when you finished it. Right. I like that. Yeah. So some of us might be a little nervous about putting that in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't look at this one then. Okay. That was, that a long time. I love it. Okay. Oh. So... I love um, it. This so we're going to talk about has, this one. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to actually bring my computer over here because you've got to see this doesn't even do it justice, but this is a king size quilt and take a look. There's actually a little story behind this. Why don't you tell us about um, why you designed my, this quilt? Uh, it was for my son's wedding, but uh, he never would tell me what he wanted for a quilt. So finally, I just thought, well, he loves stars and he does a lot of star shows and he knows quite a lot about that. And so I thought, well, I'll do this and do these stars. And um, these constellations were from Urban Threads, mm -hmm. those designs. And then I found the writing and other designs like this one mm -hmm. all around the Internet, different places. Wow. So um, it's, this is so beautiful. It's really big. <laughs> it is. Oh, what a lucky, what a lucky couple to receive such a beautiful gift. Oh my goodness. That this, is beautiful. This one also, I put the border on it that is, uh, the sets it off, border. the quarter inch border, mm -hmm. as you can see. I love that. So, it really does. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it just kind of finish, makes it look more finished and yeah. sets it off. And I, I, I really like that quarter inch border. Definitely. So, I love that too. Um, maybe I'll show you how to Let, how Larry, to do that. And Larry then we'll do said, the... uh, he said, "Oh my, I thought that was a t-shirt quilt." <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's embroidery. And again, the way it's flat is mm -hmm. the way I told you a minute ago that you've got to do those steps. Yep, you got to do so, those steps. You got to take the time. It's worth it in the end for sure. All right. So, so um, one of the things that when I saw this um, quilt a little while back when she brought it in and I just I went nuts over it uh, because it really is is just unbelievable. Um, the workmanship and the time and the effort and all the love that the love. you put <laughs> into this. You really yeah. did. You really did for your son. And um, I, I looked at that quarter inch border and I thought, are you kidding me? <laughs> like it is not easy to sew a border in like that and have it be straight, right? Right, right. right. Have it be straight. You, right. it, it is just one of those things that seems to, you know, you just can't get it exactly straight. It is just too small yeah. of a strip yeah. to do that. But you have a technique to share with us today yes. about that. <laughs> so I'm going to bring 
um, this screen down so okay. that you can all see what she's doing here. Okay. So again, this is how you get a quarter, a inch, quarter inch border quarter that looks perfect every time. Yep. And this is from originally from Claudia's Creations. She's the one that did that snowman quilt. That was where I first learned it when I did that, the one that had the snowman on it. So first you cut uh, your strips the same length mm -hmm. as your quilt piece is going to be. So in this case here, I've got an, an eight inch square. Whoops, <laughs> trying to use the computer. Okay, I've got an eight inch square here of the black. And okay, the so we're just looking at this square right okay. here. So I've got an eight inch square there and I've got an eight inch long piece of fabric okay. right here, okay? So you're going to lay it right sides together down on your piece. And I put a little one here so I can show you all the steps on one sample. Nice, I? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So if you consider that this would go all the way across, right? Okay. And nothing else there, just this. Sure, okay. okay. So you lay it down. Mm -hmm. The first thing you do is you sew a half inch line. So you're going to, to sew, can you see the sewing there? Yes. So you sew a half inch down the middle of that one inch strip. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you'll sew that from the right side and just sew it down using your your um, presser foot plate. What do you call that? The, mm -hmm. the, plate, the needle plate. The needle plate mm -hmm. on your machine sure. yeah. to, um, to guide you. Okay. And you sew it a half an inch. Okay. Then you turn it like this and you're going to just finger press it first and then go to the iron and press it good. Okay. And so this side here shows you when it's that. been sewn. See, there's the, see. there's the half inch. Let me bring this up. Okay, so you can see how she did the half inch. Now, what did you start this out at? As it one was inch? an inch. One an inch. inch. Okay. So, so she started up as a one inch where she put it right sides together against mm -hmm. the, the block, sewed a half inch seam allowance, pulled it over, and pressed, and pressed it. it really well. Okay. Okay. There we go. So once you've got that, you want to do that on all four sides. You know, normally we do it two and then we'll measure the top one a little bit longer and then we'll do that longer. No. Okay, let me let me take you back for just a minute. This would be as if you were doing an entire, like, let's pretend this is a whole quilt, right, right? right? You would actually be doing this all the way down, All the correct? way down. You're yes. not just doing it block by block. Not unless you want each block framed that framed. way. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm with you. So on this one behind me, it was done, the whole length of the quilt was, mm -hmm. was that way. Okay. And you put it on all four corner, all four edges. Okay. Okay. At mm -hmm. once. At once. Right? Okay. So you do the two sides first. Okay. And then you do the top, but they're all of them, in this case, eight inches long. All of them. The top and the bottom are not longer. Right. Than the sides. Okay. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and in fact, if you look on the back of here, you'll see that the, the block size didn't change at all. No. Oh, so yeah, you're it's right. still the same size. Still the same size. Okay. Okay. So once you have that pressed and you've done your, your all four sides, uh -huh. then you're going to take your your next piece that you're going to put on. And in this case... So this would be like a, the border. This, this would be a border okay. or, a, or a sashing or, okay. or another block, depending on however you're doing your oh, quilt. Oh, sure. Right, right, right. Okay. So your next piece was, would go on here, right sides together. Yeah. And then this is this is the part where people forget to do this. Okay. Oh, I can't wait. You want to pin this on really good. Okay. You don't want it to shift on you when you're doing it. You want to have it be, you know, stable on okay. there. Okay, sure. Then you're going to flip it upside down. Oh. And you're going to sew it from the back. Okay. <gasps> okay. But what you do when you sew it from the back is you do not sew it from the edge. I want to show you this. Oh, and this my I did goodness. on purpose so you could see it, but you'll get a, a good visual. Okay. When I sewed that down, can you see this? this edge is sticking out further than the white. Okay. Can you see the white? Yeah, I mean, is, is that further than, yes. the, uh -huh. than the black? Yeah. So if I put this against my presser foot now and I sew a, a quarter inch mm -hmm. seam, mm -hmm. it's not going to be perfect on the other side. Right. Because my, my seam isn't exactly perfect. Mm -hmm. And it never really is. You mm -hmm. always have a little bit of something picking out somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's why now when you flip it to the to the you know, you've put this on here, mm -hmm. and now you're going to sew it from the back. And that way, when you sew it from the back, you are going along this line here. 
I hope you can see that because I put it in red. But I don't so, know. so we're we're just following that same you're line. You're following your your you're following you're sewing a quarter inch away toward toward the oh, edge towards of the fabric the from this line, not from the edge of the fabric. I see, I see, I see. Okay. So you want to put your presser foot if you have a quarter inch presser foot yeah. that, that that will give you a quarter inch on both mm -hmm. sides. Yeah. You want to run your left side of your presser foot along, along the, that line, the stitch line. And so on the inside of it toward the toward the edge. Okay. okay. Instead of what we're used to doing is we sew it along the right. edge. Okay, right. I'm with you. And so here's one that, that is done. And you can see that there are the, both of the lines there. I hope you can see that mm -hmm. color. Can you can they see Turn this over just this way? There okay. we go. Okay. So those are both the sewing lines there and you can see that you have sewed it but you have sewed it a quarter inch from the from sewing the line the first line. sewing line mm -hmm. and not from the edge i love that okay yes and so then when you push that pull that back and press it you can see that you then get oh my a, a perfect quarter inch look at that that is amazing wow julie that is incredible. And you will do that around all four edges. And you don't have to worry about changing your pattern or cutting out more fabric or whatever, mm -hmm. because the size of this block did not change or the size of your quilt did not change when you added in the quarter inch. Right. Wow. I can't wait to give that a try. I really, really want to try this. Yeah. And I, and I wrote up the instructions on there, but if you yes. go to uh, the internet, and this will say this on the instructions too that mm -hmm. Chris is going to give you, but mm -hmm. um, there's a video you can watch from Claudia's Creations mm -hmm. that she walks you through step by step on mm -hmm. that. And she has several step outs rather than one little. Right, so, so Julie put together, she wrote instructions on yeah. how to do it. She's given you the link to Claudia's Creations where she, she learned this method mm -hmm. from. Uh, so you can watch the video over again. And, um, but she didn't have written instructions. So she, Julie went ahead and wrote some instructions for you. Right. And now you're gonna be able to remember what to do. What to do. So I love it. So yes, yeah. we've got instructions for you. I see some people are saying, do we, do we have a printable? Yes, <laughs> yes, we do, we do. Okay. So thanks to Julie. Yeah, and that, it turns out perfect every time. Yeah. It's, it's just a beautiful technique. It so. is, I love it. Yeah. All right. So do you okay. want to see more quilts or do you want to do the bias first? Um, let's see some more quilts okay. and then we'll do the bias. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, let me take a look at what some um, of our friends are saying. Um, Barb says, I need to try that. I love how it looks on the quilts. Sables is thanking you. Uh, Lynn said, um, I have to try this. It's amazing. Pamela, great technique. Um, let's see. Eva is saying thanks to Julie and lots of thank yous for sharing uh, and showing this technique. Um, Kathy said, wow, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> that means it's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And um, Debbie said, it's a great tip. Going to have to try that. And she loves the effect. Dee says yeah. she's definitely going to try this out. So um, interesting. Oh, interesting. Suzanne said, I just learned this exact technique from the long armor at my local quilt shop when I was asking her opinion on how to do the borders on a quilt I was doing myself. And it turned out wonderful. Great. I love that. Great. And of course, you know, Deanna, our friend Deanna out there. So okay. this is beautiful. Thank you for sharing. So yeah, really, really great um, comments coming back for this. So Patsy, I would imagine you could. She's asking, could you do this at another size, like a half an inch? Yes, you could. Uh, yeah. In fact, I did that on the, on that uh, snowman quilt. Okay. So you're just you going know. to, um, quote, Let's see, multiply it by So on four? this one, I did I did a quarter I did a quarter inch all around uh, in the middle. But when it came to the to, to this border right here, mm -hmm. the second one in is a little bit wider than the quarter inch. Okay. And you so you that? did that same idea there. And then it's got the binding on nice. the Nice. So it was a quarter inch, a little bit wider, and then the binding. Perfect. So. Oh, yes. Great example there. Okay, let's take a look at this next okay. quilt. Now this quilt, I don't know if you did this in Logan. This oh, was a quilt yeah, this that, was we, just in Sandy, yeah. that we uh, 
before the before the pandemic happened, uh, this was going to be a class. But yeah. then the pandemic happened and it got canceled. So I made the quilt anyway. Yeah. And this is a, a double slice layer cake mm -hmm. made with one layer cake. And then it's got some borders on it besides. Mm -hmm. And this was because of all this, the, the stress of making all those other ones. <laughs> you said, I want to go easy. <laughs> I'm like, this is going to be quick and easy. And this was so easy. I would recommend anybody to do this. It's just a fun technique yes. and really easy. And Missouri, Missouri Star Quilt Company has a video on how to do the double slice layer cake. Nice. Or maybe okay. we'll have a class on Okay, sometime. maybe we know. will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then the same with this one. This one was also a quilt that was going to be a class before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And this one, the reason I wanted to show you this one is because, it actually goes this way, but um, is because this is the first one that I did the edge to edge quilting on my embroidery machine using the inspections mm. expansion packs. Yes. And so very nice. I don't know if they can see the quilting. Very nice. I don't know. That's beautiful. <laughs> and the back is the, the batiks are gorgeous. You know, the, on here. the back of the batik is mm -hmm. is a pretty pretty back too, I think. Mm -hmm. You can see the quilting designs a little better. Definitely. So beautiful. And this one uh, it was expansion pack five, the butterfly. Okay. From wonderful uh, Amelia Scott. Yes, wonderful. So, okay. And then I'll show you this last one and then we'll do the binding. Okay, that, perfect. Bias, like, yeah. So this one. Oh, I recognize that. <laughs> this one is also <laughs> of my girlfriend's one. Yeah. I added in the quilting on, on these backgrounds of these blocks mm -hmm. and then stitched in the ditch to uh, finish them. Yay, I love seeing and this all done. This one. Um, the original kit that I bought, I bought it before you had come out with the, with with the, the embroidery, files. embroidery files, yeah. and it was laser cut. And yeah. so the laser cut did not match the embroidery file. Ah. <laughs> so I had to add these little other accents inside of here, inside the line. Uh -huh. There was some digitized along inside of there. Well, you did a good job. <laughs> to get it to fit. Yeah. So that was a fun one too. That's cool. And so. let's take a look at your quilt label on this. I'm just, I'm loving your quilt labels. <laughs> Thank you. Look at that. Let's see if we can get it straight. There we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, I love so. that, Julie. And the way this is done, this is another technique that oh. I use a lot. Um, that picture was just one I grabbed from the internet. Mm -hmm. And it's put on a uh, printable paper. Yes. That I print through the printer. And then... Uh, I just put a border on it and sold it on. Perfect. So Cindy is asking, do you quilt each block and then applique? On this quilt? On that quilt, did you do that? Uh, yes, I quilted I quilted the background first mm -hmm. and then did the applique on over top. the top of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. And, um, nice, nice, nice. In fact, sometimes I do a um, I do a, a label that is in the corner and they're faster to sew on. I think. Wow, that's, <laughs> but that one's gone to a lot of work to make some very special labels. That here. one I also grabbed from the internet. The, this was a picture of the fabrics sewn together, and I just grabbed it off the internet I love and that. put it in. Love that. Wow. So, that's beautiful, Julie. Uh, yeah. Gloria wants to know what machine do you stitch on? <laughs> I have a Viking. Uh -huh. It's a Viking um, Epic. A Viking Epic. Awesome. Let's see. So. Um, do, do, do. Um, Betty Ann wants to know when you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, those all weren't done in a day. <laughs> That's right. Alice is asking the same thing. Does Julie ever sleep? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they weren't all done oh, in a day. Oh, <laughs> so beautiful. So. so beautiful. I love it. Um, let's see, Janet's asking, how are the corners done on the borders? Are they mitered? They are mitered. Mm -hmm. And you know, yesterday, if you didn't see three at three yesterday, Chris showed how to do a perfect mitered corner. And you know, mm -hmm. I learned something there. You did? Because I haven't trimmed my, mm -hmm. my corners. Yep. And they look so much better trimmed. I'm going to always do that. After Yay! This. Good, so, good, 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 good. So I'm if so you didn't see it yesterday, that. watch it yesterday. <laughs> watch yesterday's go. three at three because oh, it was really good. Oh, thanks. So. All right. 
Yep, very good. You guys are are loving, loving, loving this. Okay, so one um, more technique. One more technique. Are you ready? Oh my goodness, <laughs> so much fun. So, um, oh, here's a quick question for you though. How do you sew that corner label in? Do you sew it on before you quilt it? No, I okay. don't ever sew my labels on before I quilt them. Okay. This particular one, after the quilt was all done, mm -hmm. uh, meaning, you know, it was all quilted, mm -hmm. um, then I had this made mm -hmm. already, and I sewed my binding, uh, I sewed it onto the corner before I did the binding. So I sewed, sewed it, stitched it along here on the, um, on the machine mm -hmm. at an eighth of an inch. So okay. that it was just just inside. Mm -hmm. And on this one, I I stitched along here too. And yes, that is going to show on the front. Mm -hmm. But in this one, it was so busy, it yeah, wasn't going to matter. It's going to seem like it's part of the quilting anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I stitched along here to stitch it down, mm -hmm. and then uh, put on the the, the binding mm -hmm. all around and sewed the binding down. Nice, very nice. I love that. Love, love, love it. Okay, so. Um, then the last technique that she wanted to be able to share with all of you today is how she folds her fabric uh, for bias binding. And uh, Julie and I were talking a little bit earlier about why why bias binding is a great way to go. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, a lot of times that you want to straight grain binding is great. But oftentimes, and, and for Julie, she loves to do bias binding on everything, whether always it's do straight bias or curved. The only time I don't is if I get a kit that doesn't have enough At the, fabric. Doesn't have enough fabric, yeah. So um, just, uh, just a little side note here. Uh, the reason why people choose bias binding is because, one, it has a lot more give to it. And so if you're doing scallops, if you're doing curves, um, anything like that, you definitely want to do a bias binding. Another reason that we were discussing seen earlier is because it actually will wear better on the quilt. Um, the edges of your quilt, which is the binding, is going to be the thing that actually gets roughed up the most, if you right, will, right. if it's a usable quilt. Of course, yeah. for a quilt on the wall, it's it's not as big of a deal. But um, if it's a usable quilt, that's what you're going to see start going faster than right. any other part of the right. quilt. Right. And so actually, when you have a, a bias binding, you've got um, just a stronger uh, bound or you do. stronger. You do. Um, and I think it actually, it, it actually is easier to, to work with too, uh -huh. because when you pull it over to the other side, you're not getting the mm -hmm. puckers or the wrinkles if mm -hmm. it's not quite where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And it will just fit mm -hmm. in there. It's, it's a just little nice. bit more get there. So, yeah. um, but a lot of people get worried about um, doing bias um, or cutting on the bias and it really is not that difficult. And so um, Julie put together a little uh, worksheet for all of us. And yes, this is going to be a free download under deal of the day. So thank you, Julie, for doing that. And we're gonna walk you step by step of how this works, all right? Okay. So I'm gonna bring this down here. So first I'll show you with the paper and then Chris is gonna show you with the fabric. Yep. Okay. So I've got these labeled, you know, A, B, C, D, E, and F down here. And the directions right here tell you um, step by step. Mm -hmm. Now you're probably, when you're going to do this the first time, you might want to print two of these, one to fold mm -hmm. and one to read mm -hmm. it from, because mm -hmm. otherwise you have to keep opening it up to read <laughs> it. Right, which was what I, I was I, doing when you were showing me. I was like, <laughs> what was that direction right. again? And I, and mm -hmm. I would have, I you know, printed this on another paper, but mm -hmm. I think it's easier not to have it be lost somewhere. Yes, if exactly. it's just all in one place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so okay. this, this is, we're going to first pretend this is our fabric. Okay. And it's labeled here that this is a selvage, mm -hmm. a selvage, a raw edge, and a raw edge. Okay. So you're going to take point A, which mm -hmm. is the top left mm -hmm. right here, and you're going to fold it down to point B. But what you want to be sure of is that when you fold it, that this corner right here is, is precise, right in the corner. Okay. Okay. So that's what you do. And in fact, I'm got another one that's already folded. I'm going to use this one just because, oops, no, I cut it up. <laughs> okay, sorry. Was... that one, Julie. Oh, yes, this okay. one. Okay, we'll use this one because okay. then it's already folded and I don't have to take the time to do the creases. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to take the first part and then it's to take point A and bring it down to point B. 
right there. Mm -hmm. And you're going to crease it really yep. good. Okay. Then um, you're going to take this top one, which used to be point C, mm -hmm. and you're going to bring it straight over to this corner here. Mm -hmm. where, can you see? Let me, right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're going to bring it straight over to this corner right here. So you fold it over here, and you're going to match this edge right here. Yeah. You see that? This edge right here will be matched. Okay. Then you'll take, th this is what you've got now. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. Okay. And yeah. then you're going to take this part here and fold it so that this part of it right here where it's been folded, mm -hmm. that part is going to come and match this corner. Mm -hmm. So you fold it over here to match that corner. And this part is still sticking out with fabric. Now, depending, this paper is only eight and a half by 11. Mm -hmm. So depending on the size of your fabric, this might fold several times or not, depending on how much. wrap around and so wrap around. So you're going to fold it to the back mm -hmm. here, and then it will just continue to wrap if you have more fabric. Mm -hmm. you just wrap it around and around and around. Okay, then I've written on here so you can see, then you're going to make your bias cuts. Can you read that? Yeah, let's okay. bring this up. Okay, and the first one there, I like to cut my binding uh, binding at two and a half. Chris was saying yesterday she likes to cut hers at two and a fourth. It doesn't matter. No. Whatever you want to cut yours at, it's just fine. But your first cut is going to be half of the width of whatever your bias binding is going to be. So in this case, since mine is two and a half inches, my first cut is a quarter and a, one and a quarter. And the reason for that is because up at the top there, there's folds of fabric. And so when you unfold it, you're getting double, just like you do anytime you cut on a fold. Yeah. So you're still getting two and a half, uh -huh. but you're only cutting it at half the width. Half the width because of the fold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's only on the first cut. And then after that, go ahead. You Julie. just you just continue cutting two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, all the way down until you've used up your fabric. Yep. So, and you can see from this being in color that this is going to be showing the right side here, but all this is the wrong side of your fabric that's showing uh -huh. when you right. do that. Right. And so, and when you, if you cut off that first one, I cut one off here that you can see, this is what it looks like off of that first paper. When you cut it at one and a fourth, uh -huh. that's what you get. Here uh -huh. was your fold lines here in the middle. You can see them. Uh -huh. And so this is what you get. Now, the very first piece is going to have a kind of a, an angular thing like this. Mm -hmm. And so that one, I just use that as my first edge that's flopping there on your quilt so that right. you don't have to do anything about that. All the rest of them will have an edge like this on a 45. Mm -hmm. And when you go to put those together to sew them, you'll have um, these two pieces of binding and they'll be long. Mm -hmm. And you put them together perpendicular like this with the and it, I like to think of it as it's like putting together a puzzle as well, because you have, uh, you're just matching up those diagonals. Right. So you've got them, see how you've got them perpendicular like that when mm -hmm. you're laying them together. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to sew along here at a quarter inch. And be sure you leave these dog ears on here. You don't want it to get down here and sew like this with no dog ears, because then you're going to come up short. When yeah. you open it up. Okay? Right. So you want to leave those dog ears on there. Leave a, you know, or use one of those binding uh, rulers that will let you cut those off and, and have a match to the edge. Sure, but, sure. Um, if you don't do that, then you need to leave the dog ear on there when you sew it. So Roberta is asking what size of fabric, and it can be for any size. You any do size the same amount thing. of binding. Yep. Yep. You just would you just would fold it more times. And if you, there's there's binding okay. calculators online and just mm -hmm. look up bias binding, how much you need for your amount of the quilt. So with Julie's explanation here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my left corner, bring it down here. So she's taking her selvage edge and putting it against the raw edge. Yep. And then I'm going to come up to the very top of this and bring it down on top of itself. So what I've done is it's I've created this triangle right here. Okay, uh, think of it as the rooftop of a house. Right. All right? right, so there we go. Now we're going to take point C mm -hmm. and bring it up to point D.
which is all on the paper. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring it up here. I have some flapping in the wind. That's okay, because now I'm going to wrap it around. And there we go. So now I'm ready to cut my uh, strips. I'm gonna start at the top and according to Julie's, if I were doing two and a half inches, I would, uh, a binding, I would start at one and a quarter because of this fold. And you want to make sure that these folds are even before you cut it. Look mm -hmm. at it carefully, line them up carefully, make sure those folds are even yeah. before you cut it. Definitely. So I cut the first cut at a one and a quarter. And then from there, I will just go two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. So I, I love this method. You know, I think it's great. And I love that you've created this printable for us so that it, we can easily be reminded, oh, yeah, that's how you end up folding it. And, and you'll notice down here at the bottom, there's only one layer here. So if you continue cutting and cutting and cutting, when you get here, you're going to have a little tiny length. Little tiny, <laughs> of, of, tiny. So you mm -hmm. might want to stop up here somewhere mm -hmm. unless you really need that extra fabric because right. you didn't have enough. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. You'll always get your longest cuts at the top. At the top. Yep. And then it will get lower, you know, smaller as we go. Yep. But yeah, very, very nice. So one more time. You're up here, you're going to bring left down to form a triangle. You're going to bring the top down to form just over top of it. We've created a roof line. All right. We take the side of the roof, bring it up to the top of the roof. Just like this. Bring it around. Now, if you had a larger piece of fabric, you're going to wrap it and wrap it and wrap it. Mm -hmm. All right, all I had left was this. So I'm just going to pull this down, cut, 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 cut. Again, this first cut, making sure that these folds are nice and lined up. Okay, inch and a quarter, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. Right. So if you're like me and you like to cut your binding strips at two and a quarter, then what's two and a quarter divided in half? It's one, one and an eighth. eighth. So my first cut would be one and an eighth, be again, because of the fold, it's going to fold out. And then I can go two and a quarter, two and a quarter, two and a quarter, two and a quarter. Okay. So I wanted to make sure and share this with fabric because sometimes, you know, we, we can look at this and it, it doesn't translate to fabric, but it, it will. And the easier, or I should say, it will become easier the more you do it. Okay. And then you'll be like, oh, what was I so worried about? That yeah. was easy. And if you right? forget, all you do is just keep your little paper wherever you keep mm -hmm. your, your supplies and just you know, open it up and get a mm -hmm. quick refresher if it's been a while. Yeah. And then all you do after you've sewed, you know, these together with a quarter inch, mm -hmm. then you just take that, that piece of binding that you had mm -hmm. and you fold it in half, Oops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> fold it in half and press it good. Yep. And then you're ready to sew it on. Exactly. So, so kind of fun. Yeah. Laura, um, the reason why we're cutting this way is if you wanted to create a bias, uh, binding, which is going to give more stretch. It's going to be better for your curves, better for scallops. If you're doing that, it actually wears better on the quilt. You know, it's a stronger uh, fabric weave when you have your the the fold that right. has right. those going this way. Right. Um, so it's not going to wear down as much. And a lot of people will choose to use bias also because of the print, right? Yeah. The yeah. print that's on it. For Might example, it, like if you had like a, a stripe, uh, if you had a straight stripe mm -hmm. and you wanted it to be on a diagonal on your quilt. Then, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's, there's lots of reasons to use bias. So definitely. Um, Oh, that's interesting. Kathy says she presses her fabric on a sheet of freezer paper to stabilize it, and then she prints and peels it off. Okay. You could definitely do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, very good. Uh, Anne says she's never done a bias binding, but she's going to try it. So, very You know, good. one of the things I do, too, that's another trick sometimes, is if you feel like you're you have a thin binding, and it's just not going to fill out very well when you sew the binding on. Mm -hmm. I'll sew a three-eighths of an inch mm. seam instead mm -hmm. of a quarter inch instead seam. Quarter. And then that will fill it out 
That's true. More. So you're taking a little bit more seam allowance mm -hmm. there and it will wrap around a little bit tighter. Yeah. I like that. And then of course you would definitely stop at the three eighths inch yeah, to the corner. That's right. It's all the same as what we talked about yesterday with the quarter inch, but yeah. you, you just, as long as you're consistent, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very good. Very yeah. good. Well, oh my goodness. This has been so much fun. You did it. <laughs> You did it. See, the, the hour went by so quickly, didn't it? Oh, no, it? I've already run my marathon. Does that count yeah. for my 26 UFOs? <laughs> yeah, I'll let you count for one. One. I'll give you one. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my gosh, Julie. Thank you so much. You know, before we end, I, I want to ask you a question I asked all of our guests at the end, and that is, what life advice has served you well? Okay. Okay. Well, there actually are two things. Okay, I can't wait to hear. <laughs> okay, one of them is I always told my kids, uh, it never hurts to ask. Mm. And mm -hmm. um, take example of today even, I asked Chris, <laughs> could I broadcast from your show in Stan Sandy? Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, yes. And then lo and behold, she surprises me and, <laughs> and comes to be with me. So oh, that not? didn't yeah. really hurt to ask, did yeah. it? <laughs> no, it didn't, it worked out pretty well, exactly. And so. It never hurts to ask. Yeah. And then, I mean, the worst they could say is no, right? Yeah. And then what difference yeah. does it make? Absolutely. You at least asked, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> then the other thing is something that my mother always said. But don't ask me if your 26 bookmarks can count for you. Yeah, no, don't ask no. for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Some things you better but, just uh, use common sense. That's right. Sense yeah, for, right, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. And, and what so, did your mother uh, My mother you? always said, um, I can have whatever I want in uh -huh. life. I can have whatever I want. And so you ask her, what does that mean? Mom, you can't have whatever you want. Nobody gets whatever they want. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? And she said, I just never want what I can't have. <gasps> and she says, and that way you'll always have a, a, a happy and, and successful life because you're never, you're never jealous. You're never mad. Hop you that. just never want what you can't have. And you're just happy with what you have. So Life is good, isn't it? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, Thank anyway. you, my friend. <laughs>